So, last time we may have gone a little bit too far in the demolition phase. But, thankfully we've got a magical koala that might be able to undo things for us a bit here, and undo this damage. Hey, koala, do you think you could... Okay. Oh, I gotta do this the right way. An offering of your favorite things in exchange for a favor. <laughs> awesome, do you think you can undo this damage so that way I can start a proper demolition and get the renovations going properly? <laughs> that would be great! <laughs> sure, I'll get this out of your way. <laughs> oh, wow! Well, now that the building has been restored, we can truly plan our attack here. Did somebody whoa, say attack? Whoa, 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 stand down. You have done enough, my friend. I gave us 31 days to do whatever renovations we wanted. No questions asked on cost. But there were three rules. You have to do the work yourself. No hiring anybody to do the work. You have to be done by the 31st day. You have to film it. Mmm, I should really plan this. I'll start with a scale map of the house and take a stack of index cards and go room to room, writing down everything we would want done. Then, after breaking these things down into the task lists per room, I can create a comprehensive job itinerary, or a flow list. As a side note, after renovations are complete, a licensed electrician will do a handful of things that are not in my daily with, such as replacing the circuit breaker and things like that. I do have to take apart all of these frames and the artwork, and we're going to be stowing it all in the flat files in the art room. Get all of this out of here, put a big plant, some lights or something behind it. It's interesting seeing the artwork that I had done back when I was like, 18 and 19 years old. But some of these paintings of mom's and even the ones of mine have been in storage. Like this one's been in storage since I was like six years old. It's one of mom's first oil paintings. But you can see it's starting to get damaged. So this one my mom did when she was like in college, I think, of a guy named Pierre Valide and I at Khan. But I don't know if you can see, there's this ripple in the paper and it's getting you know, stained from being in here for over 35, 40 years. It needs to be taken out. God, 60s glue. I don't know how this is connected on here. I'm not able to get it apart. There we go. It's coming up. We were serious about glue back then. I'm gonna need an X-Acto knife. There might be tape or something attaching to the original piece of artwork, so we've got to be very careful about it. So let's remove it real nice and easy, too. Success! We've gotten all of this blue paper off. Let's get rid of this wainscoting. skirting. So I've done this a few times now, and after the first time, I didn't sand anymore. Uh, these patches and stuff that you do on the wall, 
I use clean water and a soft cloth, and you wipe past it, smoothing it out. Uh, that way you don't make any dust in the air, and honestly, you get a nicer finish uh, to your patches. Uh, then you have soapy water to wash any dirt away, separate from your sanding, not sanding thing. You can scrape off any of the carpeting that's still kind of stuck or glued on there. Finish hammering in any of the nails that are sticking out. Alright, I've got to cult this gap between the baseboards and the floor. No. It is nice and clean, and it has been caulked. Next step is measuring and cutting the wood. In anticipation of Yvonne doing the mural work in the hallway, I went ahead and threw up a black line here. Didn't need to be clean or anything, but it just needed to demark where this board was going to be lying on the wall. So that way she knew to stay away from this area. I've got a number of deliveries coming today and one of them's really large. We gotta empty this room because it's gonna be taking up almost the entire floor from here all the way to the window. <laughs> the door. You should have seen this guy. He ran up here with this thing, like literally just holding it in the air like that out in front of him. This thing is really heavy. Ah. Doorbell, again. Let's take a look at what we got here. All right, there's nine of these in here. Oh, wow. All right, so I got nine of these. They are cast iron skateboard hangers where the skateboard will slide in here like this and be hung backwards on the wall. I mean, they look nice online, but this is solid work. So we'll open one of these and get something hung a little later. All right, the special package has arrived. Just gotta vacuum up the floor real quick and you'll get to see what's in here. So what is this huge, beautiful thing here? It's actually a big piece of cork. And I thought it was gonna be a lot heavier than it is because it's 16 foot by four foot. Really, really big. We're gonna be taking about 11 foot of this and putting it on the wall behind me. So that way we've got a tack board that's actually on the wall instead of tacking things to the wall or having tack boards floating around the house. Uh, we actually get to make something beautiful and nice. We cut a few feet of it off for the hallway. Um, I'm gonna make a little string kiosk to hold all of the strings that are gonna be coming up for the guitars that need strings, guitars, okay. So now that the cork is laid out and flattening for a day or two, I'm realizing that a lot of the projects coming up are scary, fraught with angst because one little mess up and I could ruin stuff that would cost a lot of money to fix and or buying the product again to do it. And case in point with the first big part of this project, the cork, you know, I bought this big roll of cork and I'm all excited, I get it down there and then I'm realizing, man, if I mess up, just one little cut, one little deviation and it's gonna look like crap and I'm gonna be totally upset. Uh, 
or if it gets messed up and I put it on the wall and it ends up coming down and falling on me or hurting the wall and then I gotta rebuild a wall and I'm kind of freaking out. Okay, deep breath and see if we can get through without damaging anything or ourselves or our psyche or our heart or our soul. So, wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. Remove this socket and block off the electricity so that way this mat can go over this hole and we don't have to like ripple over it or anything like that. So I'm just going to go and close this off because we never use this switch ever. So we're going to get rid of it. So it has dried overnight and we're going to go get some more of that glue stuff in a bucket to do the other piece of cork that's going to go in the hallway. Yeah. But it turned out pretty well. It's a huge piece of cork, Jesus Christ. I think we messed up the electricity when we put up that cork wall. <sighs> no, no. We're gonna have to call the electrician and see if he can fix this too. And since we've gotten this cork board hung on the wall, now we can actually use the cork board instead of these little tiny cork boards that are on a tripod taking up floor space, which was the whole point of putting that up there. Let's go and get this moved over there real quick. Wow, those were the starter projects and the smaller ones at that. 15 days can go by really, really fast. No, 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 we're gonna remain optimistic. The next 15 days, we'll see the fruits of my ambitions realized. Doubts be damned. Next episode, we'll be reveling in glory or wallowing in failure. Either way, I'm gonna give it a shot.